Here we are in front of the Duke Homestead Tobacco Museum. So let's go inside and check out what they have to offer today. Tobacco seed right there. Coker tobacco seed. Dukes of Durham. Lift the cover to smell the aroma. I can't smell, so it don't affect me. North Carolina tobacco belts. We're deep in the heart of it today. B group leaves. C group leaves. Here's what different pests and diseases that affect the crops. Growth stages starts out. Check out this guy, animatronics. Well, finally, what's he gonna say? Hi there. Well, hello. Are you folks today? Doing all right. What brings you out here in the hot sun? Learn about tobacco. I reckon you want to know something about tobacco farming. I sure do. Well. The best way to describe tobacco farming is to call it a 13 month crop. You've caught me in the middle of priming or uh, harvesting. The bottom leaves cropping first, you can see that we're pulling those now. And later in the summer, we'll move on up the plant till all that's left is a field full of tobacco stalks. This back breaking job takes about six weeks, right here in the middle of summer. That sure is hot. After we finish priming, we cure the crop in those log barns that you see right over there. Once a barn full is cured, we take it to the pack house and grade each leaf. Later this fall, we'll take several truckloads into town to sell at the warehouse. That's when all those months of hard work pay off. I've always sold at Planner's Warehouse here in Durham. And I guess I'll do the same this year as long as the prices are good. Our work doesn't even stop in the wintertime. We cut the flue wood for next year's curing, re the barns, sew our plant bed, and fix any broken tubes. If we need any tobacco sticks, winter's the best time to ride them. Now that's a split them to you city folks. When spring comes, that's when we really start to work. We have to break the land, run the rows, and pull the young plants from the plant bed. I used one of them new transplanters this year, and it sure beats setting plants with a peg. I bet it does. Once I get a good stand of tobacco, we have to weed it, top and sucker it, worm it, and lay it by before priming. Looks like this year's crop might be a pretty good one. With any luck, I'll get another barn full from this field, and if the good Lord's willing, this year's crop might just make it to the warehouse. Well, if you folks will excuse me, I gotta get back to work. If I keep talking, this 13-month crop won't even make it to the curing barn. moving. He's watching me. They're 
preparing for market right here. Tobacco warehouse right here. Rudolph Hatch buys leaf on the market of Philip Morris. America's finest cigarette. Here's some snuff. They even got rainbow. Smoking tobacco. Cigars. Cigarettes. And chewing tobacco. Now I know a lot of people don't do this, but some of that stuff is very sweet tasting. Um, cigars have a strong taste to them. Depends on which kind you buy. Smoking tobacco, I've used a pipe before. And some of it is very, I love the aroma of it. Now this I've used, it's a powder. Now what it, the old time saying is very good for bee stings and everything. And I have used it for that purpose. This guy's hard at work. This is a plug press. It's what's made to use chewing tobacco. Used honey, licorice, prune juice to flavor it wonder if that gave you the runs the quester cutter this is what uses for cigarettes well hello there uh, this machine is called a quester tobacco cutter and I'm loading cheese Oh, that's a name for press tobacco. When I first came to work here at the factory two years ago, I started out filling hoppers with cut tobacco. Now I'm working at this here cut. It's hot and dirty and noisy work, but it's a heat better than priming tobacco or picking cotton on sheds. It's an important job though. You see, tobacco cut at this machine goes into making some of the finest smoking tobacco anyway. We work eight hour shifts with a break in the morning and one in the afternoon. Now, if we have to take a quick break, this red card here uh, tells a floor supervisor that the man next to me is running both his machine and mine. A green card means I've gone and was cleared by my supervisor to go see the company nurse or to be gone from a job for some other reason. Rose I'm Wright Packer. Right now. A nice hot dinner in the cafeteria. For 25 I think she's giving me the evil eye. Tobacco tea baggers. Really oh, tobacco bag baggers, not tea baggers. Plus benefits. I even have a uniform. I come to work at 7 in the morning and I can go home and, and still have time to screen. And fish on the weekend. Yes, sir. There's been a lot of changes here. feeder. Hello, how are you today? Well, My fine. Name is Gladys Jones, and this is the production floor. That's Gladys. That's my grandmother's name. And we use it to pack cartons of smoking tobacco before they're sent to the shipping department. I've been working for the company off and on for nearly 10 years since I started in the summer of 1928. You look good I've since been being born in 1928, or working there since 28. Me and Ernest both work 40 hours a week, and right now I'm making 40 cents an hour. Would you work for 40 cents an hour? Well, they did back then. <laughs> We live in West Durham, over near Watt Hospital and Pastor Lucia. 
cigarette packer here. Cigar rolling. You ever rolled a cigar? <laughs> it's a bag jack right here. The original American Tobacco logo. I'm not quite sure if they used that for Redman or if that's a different one. Let's see. Early advertising. Durham smoking tobacco. Some of these old signage here, her old mill pouch. It's, they used to come in these little boxes. There's Red Shoe. Big Wolf. They even got some of these fat men canisters. Look, you used to sit here in your chair and smoke a cigar, read a magazine. Back in the golden age. Prince Albert's in a can. Who's gonna let him out? <laughs> Here's some magazine articles back in the old days. Back in the pre-1910s. 1910s. The 20s. The 30s. 40s. 50s. And the 60s. We're in the spittoon section here. Have you ever used a spittoon before? I have. Back in the old west. The different kinds of spittoons. Now what's this? I'm not quite sure how that works. They got fancy spittoons, turtle spittoons. What's that? I'm not sure what that is. Spittoons of all different sizes and shapes and collars. They even got girly spittoons for your granny. Right there. Look how fancy they were back in the day. Perique, the champagne of tobacco. If you want the finest tobacco, you know where to go with Perique. Now here's some fancy tobacco pipes. If you're a typical rich that likes to hot smoke and tongue bite.
Now you could smoke this and have it go out through the top. Even a locomotive can make some steam with your smoke. This is a bell, the Liberty Bell in tobacco form. These aren't things I haven't seen probably in 20 years, cigarette vending machines. Seems like they've replaced these with condom machines these days. Didn't you know that how? You can get your gumball and your cigarettes. <laughs> Just in case your first funky, you can get your gumball. Here's the impact of tobacco around this age, of everything it has bought and made around here locally, which is impressive. We're about to do the second part of the tour here at the Tobacco Museum. The actual tobacco house. Well, we're going to do the self-guided tour since we're not doing this professionally right now. We are just here stopping by, looking at what we can find before her doctor's appointment. So, let's go take a look. Maybe I can read a brochure. Maybe I can BS a little bit. This is the Duke House. He built this for a second wife, Artelia, in 1852. The original structure contained four rooms and two bedrooms. He expanded with an attached kitchen and dining room. This house was sold to Duke University. Well, actually, he donated it to Duke University. See if we can see inside. Go around and look at the cellar and probably would be good to do a tour of the place, but timing and doing a self guided tour is the quickest thing to do right now to actually see it. We may come back one day when we have a little more time. But I'm just giving a brief overview of the property and the tobacco crops. I had to check out the tobacco plants actually up close and personal. So here they are. Looks like something's been biting on them. I'm trying to see if there's any grasshoppers or anything around what their local grasshopper looks like around here might be slightly different shade of collar or different variant that we have at home but I haven't seen any insects on them so there there it is tobacco plants look at this old place out of everything here gypsy Lynn likes the tree it's pretty it's not a tobacco tree but it is a nice tree nope. no other tree i like the tree you've never smoked a cigarette in your life yeah then you have used tobacco you <laughs> when's the last time i've done a tobacco product uh, a few minutes ago oh Excuse me more. It's probably been 25 years since I've had a cigarette in my hand. When's the last time I've done a cigarette? I don't know. You've ever, I don't know, have you? Yeah, um, occasionally, not too often. When I was four years old. 
and what happened afterwards I never touched the stuff for 35 years and then what did you do again <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, what happened was I took mom and dad's at an early age and played with the lighter and I pissed the bed that night and <laughs> I don't know if I believe that old tale or not but I don't believe that tale. But what is this place here? Oh, you got I mean, the paper. <laughs> well, I'm looking here. Looking at this tree that you're fascinated with. That would be number two. And number two is the tobacco pack house. That's a pack house, baby. Where they dried the leaves. You ever dried leaves before? Flowers. Another little cabin back behind here. That is number one, and that's the tobacco curing barn. Where they cured it made it all better. So that's about the tour that I'm going to do today. After everything you have just learned here at this tobacco museum, what have you learned most? Tree's pretty. The tree is pretty. <laughs> I'm glad you've gotten a lot out of this. <laughs> I hope more tobacco people, people who actually do it, enjoy this. Come out here and say, you know what? I gotta get me a little bit of that Duke tobacco. Cause it's right here in Durham, North Carolina.